Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So it's the start of March and it's coming up to that time when we need to start planting our potatoes. And today I'm going to show you exactly how I go about planting my potatoes in wood chips. So I mentioned a few times on my live streams that I've still got potato buckets that I haven't quite harvested. So what I'm doing is I'm going to pull out the potatoes that I haven't harvested from last year. First of all, I'll see what harvests or what potatoes we've got to harvest because some of these potatoes will have started to sprout and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these sprouted potatoes or the potatoes that are starting to sprout as potatoes to plant so I'm going to use these as my seed potatoes I've got quite a few of the buckets so I'm going to pull all these out and harvest these look at the size of this worm the biggest worm I've ever seen look at that monster worm so this is what I mean these are already starting to sprout these are potatoes that I've left over wintering but they're starting to sprout so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these ones and these are what I'm going to use as my seed potatoes for this year so I've got myself a good harvest of seed potatoes now let's go get planting so those of you who are familiar with my ways of growing I grow all my potatoes in wood chips and you can see the type of material that I'm growing in so it's not refined wood chip it's quite raw unprocessed so this wood chip has been down here and I grew potatoes in the same place here last year and I'm going to do it again this year so this bed is going to be my permanent potato patch yeah, it's just going to be really straightforward growing just hollow out a couple of furrows like this and then we'll get the wood chip plant uh, the potatoes planted this method of planting potatoes is really simple all it literally is, is you place a potato on top of the earth and then pile it with wood chips. And what happens then is the roots of the potato plant burrow into the soil and they're the feeder plants and the tubers, they spread sideways and because the wood chips quite friable and quite loose, they grow into really nice healthy potatoes. With this method of growing, I've never really had a problem with wireworm or any other type of worm or slugs burrowing into my potatoes. But last year, I started noticing wireworm turning up a little bit more often. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something as a little bit of an insecticide. But a lot of people use the same thing as a fertiliser anyway. And this is wood ash. This is ash straight from my stove. And I'm just going to line the trenches with wood ash before I start planting. Really simple, <clears throat> straightforward growing. Plant them about a foot apart. You don't need to be precise, but that's roughly the sort of dimensions I go for. And that's it, just cover them up again. And jobs are good on. I know it's the start of March and we could still end up with a lot of frost and it's still the temperature is still quite cold at the moment so it could get quite cold overnight and there is a danger if you're planting into wet soil especially at this time of year that these potatoes start rotting when you're planting this early but with wood chip you don't get that you don't have that problem because it's quite free draining wood chip's got this amazing quality of holding on to moisture but at the same time being free draining in terms of growing like this it's an absolutely magical method now some people do tend to add wood ash when they're growing things like potatoes anyway because it's a good source of potassium but for the way I'm growing wood chip naturally produce you know wood chip naturally has a lot of potassium in it anyway and that's feeding the soil and the soil is going to be quite nutrient rich so realistically if it wasn't for the wireworm i wouldn't be worried about putting wood you know adding potash to this when i grow my potatoes like this i don't really fertilize them it's literally just plant and go So these plants that you can see on top, this is all my squash plants that I just used to protect the soil over winter. 
I just chucked them on top of the beds. I'll separate out the canes that I use for growing. We'll use these canes again. So I'll put them to one side. But all this stuff, absolutely fine. I just spread it all over the top. You know, it'll break down. And because of the type of material it is, it's a great way of adding carbon to your soil. I'm a big believer in just mulching and just use whatever you've got to mulch. Don't worry about what you're using. Just, just uh, as long as it's organic, most of it's gonna be absolutely fine. Another benefit of using wood chip and growing like this is you can see this patch, there's relatively few weeds apart from this one weed here that it's wood havens. It's a nightmare to pull. But the leaves are absolutely fine. They can just go on there and they'll break down. It's this nasty root that you've got to get out. <laughs> it's coming. There we go. I'll give that to the chickens. This was, this was the last bed that I started growing in. And you can actually, if you go back um, to my videos, you can actually see when I started growing in this bed for the first time when I turned it. It was about three or four years ago. It is still relatively new ground. And the soil over the years, going from what it used to be to what it is now, is night and day difference. Now with a bed like this, if you were worried about um, fertilizer problems. If you were worried about getting um, more nutrients into it. From my experience of growing with wood chip, it contains all the nutrients that you're most likely to need when growing in, in them. You can grow pretty much anything. But if you are worried about adding your nutrient loss on a bed like this, then just mulch it with some manure. While I'm planting, you could chuck a handful of chicken manure in here. You could chuck uh, some cow manure, horse manure, anything like that into here. Or once you finish planting, just get a wheelbarrow load and spread it over the top and just leave it. It'll just decompose and feed the soil, feed the plants as it's going. So you can see some potatoes that I haven't harvested from last year that are coming up. That one is about to sprout again, so I'm just gonna leave that in the ground. It would have, it would have, started growing by itself anyway. Oh, look at that huge mammoth one. Let's see if that's, got, oh, that's got sprouts on it as well. So that's gonna go straight back in the ground. And I know some people are against planting potatoes in the same place two years in a row, but I'll show you a bed in a minute. And you might be wondering why I'm not going all the way up to the edge of the bed. Because potatoes take a long time to grow and it's a full season plant, what I tend to do on the edge is I plant crops that I'm gonna harvest a lot more regularly or that are gonna need a lot more regular intervention. So you plant your things that you're not gonna to touch for a long time right in the middle. And I've left a foot on that side because I'm gonna plant peas there. And I've left a foot on this side because I might plant some spinach or I might plant some broad beans or something else down this side. Okay, that's a little, go on, that's fine. Go on, keep doing a little bit. No, not that close. Come a bit further away, a bit further away. A bit further away, a bit further away. There you go, good. Okay, while you're doing that, I'll come from this side and I'll cover it with this wood chip. One of the things about growing potatoes is you've got to be careful about diseases like potato scab. Now potato scab is quite often associated with soils that are high in pH, so more alkaline. I know you've seen me just put in wood ash and that's going to cause it to go more alkaline, but all wood chip, regardless of whether it's pine cone or whether, whether it's any kind of other wood chip, most wood chip is close to neutral or close to acidic. And if you use, um, and if you're using a, uh, a mixture of pine cone. I mean, I use mixed wood chips in these in these gardens. So I'm not someone who's picky about the wood chips that I get. I generally put in whatever I find, whatever I can get my hands on. So it's naturally already going to have a slightly acidic pH to it. Even though I've added this wood ash to these potatoes, 
it's not going to make a massive difference to how the potatoes as they grow and react to the wood chip and the wood ash together because one's going to be acidic one's going to be alkaline they're going to balance out to neutral if you do tend to suffer from potato scab lower the ph get it more acidic get it to about a ph 5 and your um, your potatoes will be less likely to suffer from potato scab scab does affect other root crops so things like carrots as well you will you will see if you have got scab in your soil it will affect those kind of plants as well so lowering the ph can actually help with that my compost piles aren't fully built yet so instead of um, composting a lot of the squash plants and you know viney plants they just got dumped onto these beds as a way of protecting the, the beds over winter but also as a way of breaking it down and adding nutrition to the soil that's pretty much my potatoes planted if i do manage to get hold of some uh, other seed potato varieties i'll finish the rest of this bed off don't worry about these big bits on top of here that will break down and it'll all turn into uh, soil or nutrition for the soil i'll use this stick as a marker for where i've got up to with my potato planting so all that has been planted it's coming up to that time of year where we're starting to cut our grass so all the grass clippings can just get dumped on here it's fine my compost piles aren't built yet so i need somewhere to chuck my compost pile uh, grass clippings when i cut, cut my grass but at the moment it's just going to get chucked on here and does it smell like what no so anyone worried about um, excess carbon and not enough nitrogen this is another way of adding your nitrogen back so if you continue to add layers like this you're just going to make sure that the ground doesn't freeze and you're going to have a wonderful crop of potatoes so people being worried about continuously growing potatoes in uh, the same spot for a number of years now one of the earliest videos or one of the earliest harvest videos that i did was my potato harvest videos and it was from this spot where i grew my potatoes and what i've always done here is i've never been able to harvest properly i always get loads and loads of volunteer potatoes here so again with this spot is i've missed the harvest at the end of autumn the start of winter and i ended up harvesting it in january and what i've done is i know it's the same thing as those potatoes is that they were starting to sprout so i've just covered them giving them plenty of protection i'm starting to add more wood chip over the top and this is sifted off wood chip and i'll do the same over this side i'll cover all of that but that's a really simple way of planting potatoes and continuously growing over and over again in the same spot i add very little to that i top it up with wood chip a little bit over the course of the year um, or wherever whenever i can get it grass clippings any other vegetable scraps any other things that i can use as mulch goes over the top and i just forget about it i just get really good harvest off it continuously that's the same thing i'm going to do with this bed is i'm going to keep this as a perennial potato bed i'm not going to move potatoes around anymore so this is a little bit of an insight into how i'm growing my potatoes this year it's slightly different to the years that i've grown by it's all about adding different techniques applying what you've learned trying something new experimenting a little bit but this has worked well for me i've tweaked it a little bit and it's going to continuously inshallah keep working for me so thanks for watching don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates if you want to support this channel you can always become a patron i'll leave a link for it at the description of this video and i'll see you on the next one assalamu alaikum warahmatullah